You may have seen one of those videos online where an athlete just powers through hurdles, knocking them over with their hands, their feet, not even attempting to jump, and thought, can you do that? Well, the answer actually is pretty interesting and in many ways this might surprise you. So we start with a story from the 1932 Los Angeles Olympics. There was an Irish athlete by the name Bob Tisdale. Bob won the gold medal and he shattered the world record in the 400 meter hurdles. And then moments later, he received notice that his world record wouldn't count because on the very last hurdle, he knocked it over. Well, that's because the rules at the time stated that athletes were disqualified for knocking over three hurdles or more, and records would only register if an athlete cleanly negotiates all the hurdles. Early in the afternoon, Milton Green of Harvard was disqualified for knocking down four hurdles in the 120 yards. Now, the whole concept behind hurdles in the first place is to add an additional variable in sprints, right? It's another barrier that an athlete must overcome. And 100 years ago, the hurdles were made entirely of wood in what was called the T-frame. They're usually pretty heavy, and so because of their shape and weight, they usually didn't knock over too easily, and runners would often fall when they did. So that's why in the early days, runners would jump instead of run over them, and they would tuck both their feet under them as they cleared it. So following the controversy in the 1932 Olympics, the rules changed, and so knocking over the hurdles would no longer be a disqualification. And as a result, a new hurdle design was introduced in 1935, the L-shaped hurdles. This new hurdle was lightweight, the legs pointed towards the runner, which allowed it to fall forward and out of the way of the runner as it was knocked down. And because of this, the new L-shaped hurdles were less likely to interfere with the runner as it was knocked down, so new techniques and performance, they quickly adapted. Athletes began sprinting between the hurdles, staying low, clearing them quickly and efficiently. This also led to the era of power hurdlers. These are bigger and stronger athletes. They're powerful enough to knock over the hurdles with their lead leg and they keep running without breaking their stride or slowing down significantly. The other impact from the style of hurdling is because the hurdles were hit so hard with so much force, they would often bounce all over the track, sometimes flying into other lanes, which is an obvious problem. And so this has caused multiple changes to design specifications over the year, shifting leg position, increasing the weight, shifting counterbalance so that athletes are less likely to hit the hurdles, or at least less inclined to hit the hurdles. So as hurdle designs changed, techniques changed, and along with it, so did the rules. Track and field's world governing body IAAF, or World Athletics, they set standards on hurdle designs and specific rules for hurdles, and there are a few that we'll focus on. For starters, what happens if you step out of your lane? Well, the rules state that an athlete must stay in their lane. Now, in multi-lap races, the rules are kind of amended to cover that the athlete is allowed to cut over at certain distances, but for hurdles, you must stay in your lane assignment or you'll get disqualified. Now, there are exceptions. If an athlete is pushed or forced out of their lane by another athlete or object, then it's okay as long as they make a clear effort to get back into their lane and it doesn't result in any material advantage. Also, if you get knocked into another lane and you purposely obstruct another runner, then you get disqualified. And then you ask, well, what happens if you get obstructed and it causes you to fall, to lose the race, or you get a significant impedance? Well, an athlete may be awarded a solo time trial. So another common question is, can you run around the hurdle? Well, the answer is no, unless you're forced out of the lane, which causes you to miss a hurdle, but if that happens, you're more likely to get a new time trial. Rule 22.6.1 states an athlete will be disqualified if the athlete's foot or leg is beside the hurdle on either side at the moment of clearance. This means you can't run around it, you have to go over it. So what about the question of can you go under the hurdle? Well, the answer again is no. And again, Rule 22.6.1 states an athlete will be disqualified if the athlete's foot or leg is below the horizontal plane of the any hurdle at the moment of clearance. Meaning, no, you can't crawl under the hurdle, and I don't know why you would, because it's definitely not going to help you in the race. So now we get to the big question. Can you knock down a hurdle? Well, yes and no. For starters, there used to be a rule which states that you can't deliberately knock down a hurdle, and that wording has since been removed knocking down a hurdle doesn't itself result in disqualification. And there's a few things that kind of specify that. For starters, it comes down to the judge or the official making an objective decision. So they replace the wording to help assist with that. Rule 22.6.2 .2 states that if they knock down or displace any hurdle by their hand, body, or the front side of their lead lower limb, 
which means basically the top of the thigh to their foot, then they're disqualified. And that helps make an assessment. For instance, if the athlete falls and they have to use their hands to just quickly get over to continue running because something happens, right? Versus an intentional running through using your chest or hands just to push the hurdle down. That's deemed for qual disqualification. So if we think back to our power hurdler, Rule 22.6.3 actually addresses that by stating that they directly or indirectly knock down or displace a hurdle in their or another lane in such a manner that affects or obstructs upon any other athlete in the race. So basically, if you knock down someone else's hurdle or you knock down your own hurdle hard enough to where it flies into someone else's lane or causes someone else to be impeded, then you can become disqualified. So now let's think back to our Olympian Bob Tisdale. Rule 22.7 states that Except for those exceptions, the knocking down of a hurdle shall not result in disqualification nor prevent a record from being made. So Bob's record eventually became valid because they changed the rules. So they retroactively in 1935 awarded him with his world record. So there you have it. Yes, you can knock down a hurdle. You wouldn't want to because the hurdles are designed to where you have to apply a significant amount of force for them to tilt over, which inherently will slow you down. So you want to get over them cleanly. But as long as you don't break one of those rules, yes, you can knock them over and not be penalized. And one last thing to remember is these are the rules of World Athletics, track and field's world governing bodies. But the rules may vary slightly from locality as well as by competition to competition. And if you like this, I have a whole series on band techniques and track and field that you can go check out. Thanks for watching. But athletes do dumbass things if it improves their performance.